This is Jean Saint Pierre, and this is how I spend and save my first million dollar. You know, it's cool that they're doing this on other sports now as well. It's really interesting to see what UFC fighters are. Since it's a relatively new industry and new sport compared to the others, we don't really have as much information on how much they actually earn and how their spending goes. So this is quite interesting. My first fight ever, I got paid $1,100 hundred dollar because my opponent did not make the weight otherwise i would have probably made even less because i got 30 percent of his purse <laughs> you know this is actually pretty cool in most workplaces if you come in to work and your colleague doesn't put in then you don't get paid extra but in his case you do so but i guess it's a bit different if it's someone hitting you in the face who could pretty much almost kill you. So I guess you kind of do need the money to make up for it. I didn't know what I wanted to become until I saw the first UFC on TV. When I first saw the UFC, I thought it was kind of boring compared to professional wrestling at such a young age. I didn't really quite understand the fact that if you're actually getting punched in the face, it's a lot more powerful and a lot more hard to deal with than pretend punched in the face. Not long after, I too wanted to actually try and do it as well, but not long after I realized that wasn't gonna be for me. And even now when I see these massive fights and how much they're earning, I often think about, would I be willing to be punched in the face for like $10 million? And the answer is probably not. At 100 million, I have to say yes, because that's life changing money and a couple punches I can deal with. But at 10 million, I'm still on the line of, uh, 1 million is probably actually not enough even. Because the thing is, I know I'm going to lose very quickly. And if I could just throw in the towel and lose and not even take a punch, I would do it and just accept that I piss everyone else off. But you know, <laughs> that's not going to go over well. And as you'll probably see in some of these My First Million videos, $1 million actually isn't going to be enough to sustain you for the rest of your life. So one punch that destroys the rest of your life is probably not worth it for $1 million. At least if you're not a fighter. If you're a fighter and that's what you do and what you love, then good for you and I hope you earn millions. We didn't have a lot of money when I when I grew up. We were not poor either because I eat every day. I had money for school, but we were not wealthy. You know, I think that's a good way to look at life. As long as you can afford to eat and get stuff done, then you're not necessarily poor, especially compared to some people out there who have to do it really tough. I had to work as security in a hip hop nightclub as a garbage man. You know, these are good jobs, especially for what he wanted to do. Security in a nightclub pays pretty well. And if you're not in a dangerous area, then there's relatively little risk. I mean, sure, you have to deal with drunk people and all of that, which can be a pain, but you get paid well for it. So good choice. Garbage man as well. Look, we all have garbage, so we all have to deal with garbage at some stage, unless you're mega rich. But for the realistic rest of us, I mean, you're going to have to deal with garbage. So if you can get over that and you can deal with it, it's a high paying job with low entry requirements, so good luck to you. So it's also worth it for someone like him because you're getting fit on the job as well. So you're keeping active and out there and doing stuff. The UFC recruit me, but at that time, I was not making enough money. That's one of the things in the early days of the UFC, people weren't earning a lot of money. They may be selling out these massive shows, but at the end of the day, the fighters themselves weren't earning a lot. So many people see the world champion and think that, wow, this guy's selling out an arena. And meanwhile, he's not making that much relatively, especially when you consider some of the costs that they have involved as a UFC fighter. Things were so tight to me that I couldn't afford to lose a fight. Because if I would have lose a fight, I would have been in debt. Well, the positive of that at least is that it gives you an amazing amount of motivation because if you literally cannot lose the fight, then you have to put everything in to win. If you've read the book, The Art of War, you would know about Sun Tzu's theory of burning the boats. That is that when you go to war, you burn the boats behind you that you got on there with so that you cannot retreat. And that's kind of the situation he found himself in here. He had to win. So that means instinctively he would have always been pushing himself to the absolute maximum because there was no choice to lose. That being said, if you are an elite world renowned athlete, I think that the outcome shouldn't impact whether you actually can afford to live. I remember my first fight in UFC, I made 3,000 to show plus 3,000 to win. Wow, that is so low. If you think about how UFC athletes have to go into retreats to go and train for fights, they have to spend weeks away training for the particular fight. That means that he's probably earning less than $1,000 a week to fight and compete in the UFC. Then I had a second fight. I made 4,000 to show plus 4,000. The UFC has obviously moved on and UFC fighters are earning more now, but that is so low when you consider at the level of an athlete that he is. And you compare that to someone who's say paying in the NFL, how much they earn. To win, then I won that fight by knockout. 
that fight gave, gave me a, a, a chance to go for the title right away. So again, when he was earning $8,000 a fight, he was at the level just below the championship fight level. That would be the equivalent of an NBA player who's in the middle of the ranks in the teams, who would probably be earning millions of dollars. So to put it into perspective, UFC fighters earn absolutely nothing compared to what people think. I had a chance to pursue my dream. I was studying and I was working as well. I had like a crazy schedule. I sat down with my partner and I told them, I said, listen, if things doesn't go well, I can always come back to school. But for the next session, I would like to just focus on training because I have a title shot and it's a, it's a big opportunity. Yeah, I think if you're about to fight for a world championship belt, I think that you're at the level where you can drop out of school and focus on fighting and you can always come back to college. As he mentioned, you can always come back and that's a lesson to learn for anyone. If you have an opportunity in front of you, you can always go and pursue it and come back to college at a later date. And they agreed. That's when I start to train full time. Now that's pretty crazy on itself. The fact that he wasn't even a full time fighter, that means that he wasn't training full time and yet he was able to get into the championship fight. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. I lost that fight, but it made me a much better fighter because I've learned a lot from that experience and I rebound immediately after. And that's a good point to make as well. The fact that yes, you can take a step back, you might lose the current battle, but you still have a chance to win the war. That is the fact that you can actually still achieve your dreams even if today you fail. It may look like everything is on the line right now, but you still have time to reassess and come back and attack it another day. I finally got myself another title shot and I beat my Matt Hughes. So the UFC decided to renew my contract and that's when I made my first million. So that's pretty amazing. He actually had to become a champion to earn a million dollars. Imagine in any other field, if you're selling out arenas and you had to still be the best person in the world just to earn a million dollars. And that kind of sounds crazy, but at the same time, you think of how many people are paying for tickets just to attend and then you have the people watching at home who are paying on pay-per-view, etc. I start working with financial advisor right away. And I think that's the best move you can make when you start to make real money is you have to speak to financial advisors. You know, you can look up anything on the internet and you can find out any information and a lot of it is great. But at the same time, you need someone who's an expert in your specific financial situation because there are a lot of nuances, especially around taxes and so on. So simply changing one word in your contract could be the difference between keeping hundreds of thousands of dollars even on a $1 million contract. First, because I'm, Can I'm a Canadian citizen, the tax report is very complicated. A lot of athletes, they make the mistake, they don't pay their taxes. So I made sure my, my structure was solid and, and all good. And that's something that's key. If you're doing a job the way you earn money in different locations, when you're doing international business of any kind, or you're a pro athlete who competes in different countries, there are a lot of different tax implications. In American sports, you have to pay different taxes based on where the games are located because each city wants a tax from that game. Taxes genuinely just seem to be a way for the government to make everyone's life way more complicated. It'd be so much easier if they just made things super simple and just said, you pay this, and that's it. So a lot of athletes, I, I think they start right away to invest on, on luxury cars, uh, stuff like that, jewelry, but I didn't do that. If I make money, I need to make myself more competent to become better. I travel the world in order to gain more knowledge and become better. That's a great attitude to have. Being a worldly person who travels around, it means you get input from different places and different people. It makes you grow as a person in astronomical levels because you become exposed to different cultures and different ways of thinking. I would almost even argue that it's better to go on a around the world trip and stay in different locations for four years than to go to college for four years. But that's a whole different topic. We talked about how I save my money. Now let's talk about how I spend it. Okay, we didn't actually talk about how you saved your money at all. You just mentioned the fact that you didn't spend on luxury items, which is fantastic. But that's not necessarily going out and buying income producing properties or buying shares or ETFs, for example. Whilst it's sexier to talk about how you spent your money, it's actually a lot more interesting and beneficial for people to learn how people invest their money. So I would love if they actually started to incorporate a little bit more about how these athletes actually invested their money and the advice they got from their financial advisors. The first thing I did is to clear all my parent debt because my parents are the ones that support me since the beginning, you know? They took care of me as a baby, so that was the first thing I did. And when my mom called me crying with my dad on the line and said, that's your money, we don't need your help, 
it was like one of the most beautiful, one of the best day of my life. Paying my parents' death, 50,000. I mean, that's a fantastic and noble thing to do. And relatively, it's a small amount of his first million. So it's a really good and wise expense and well done to him. And there's no criticism anyone could have of that. Also, I'm going to assume it's probably a mortgage or something like that. So it's probably money that's been well spent as well. Second thing at, that I bought two cars for my parent, Japanese car at to Toyota. They didn't really want to have something from me, but I, I forced them. Their car was broke all the time, and so I bought them a new car. And I, I want them to have a, a more luxury car, but they, they really didn't want it. Like they say, oh, the, a good uh, Japanese car will be something that, that will last for long. And like at that time, it was maybe 20, maybe 40,000, I would say 40. $40,000 for my parent cars. I mean, that's fantastic and great advice. And the Toyotas are great cars. They do last for ages, so it's a great purchase. They're good cars with plenty of features that run for a long time, as opposed to luxury cars that have a lot of flashy features, but they need to be serviced more expensively as the time goes on. So even just the maintenance and upkeep can be quite a lot. So these are two great cars that are good and will keep going on a lot to maintain and will keep going for a long time. So it's a pretty wise expense. And quite frankly, compared to a lot of these other athlete videos, so far he's spent less than most people spend on their parents' one car. So the fact that he's been able to cover their debt, buy them both cars, that'll last for a long time, is really wise spending. Further, he's setting them up to have a comfortable retirement and one that's maintainable. And it's still good. I mean, it's not luxurious like a Mercedes or a Porsche or something like that. But at the end of the day, this is something that'll last for a long time. I bought myself a, vi a, 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 a car as well, Nissan Xterra. My vehicle was pretty bad, so I needed something safe. And I always love SUV because in Montreal, there's a lot of snowstorm. I also felt that in a SUV, you're normally higher, so it's, it's safer. My biggest fear is to get in, into a car crash and, and, and not being able to do what I love to do in my life. Nissan Xterra, $20,000. Yet again, another sensible and reasonable car purchase. Really well done, and also it's a really wise spending of money. So, so far, this is actually looking really promising. One of my uh, sister, she wanted to have her master degree to take care of her family and be able to free herself to pursue uh, her dream. And I gave her money all the, like every few months to, to, you know, to to keep rolling, you know? Like now she's still doing, like she's doing it because she has kids, she's working and she's still doing it. $10,000 for my sister to get her master degree. That's not a lot of money and I don't think it would cover the full degree. So he's only contributing a bit there. So again, it's not a major impact over the thing of it. And it's also helping support his family to get ahead in life. So well done yet again. To tell you the truth, like, it would be very boring, the show, if I tell you the truth. Like, my parent mortgage. See, it was the mortgage. Again, that was a fantastic use of money. $50,000 to pay off their mortgage is perfect. My parents' cars, my sister's, this. There is nothing else that I did on the short notice. That, oh, bang, you know, like, I spread it, you know? That's yet again another really fantastic attitude. The fact that he's spreading the money. It means that he's not buying luxurious items that will be a one-off and will be all gone within five years' time. Another 50000 dollars for my family gifts expenses to help them pursuing their dreams now we don't know what that fifty thousand dollars was on but again he still kept the money relatively low compared to what he earned and most of it all seems to be actually supporting his family and setting them all up for life so the fact that he's setting everyone up for life hopefully even if he got into a bad situation that would mean that they'd be able to pay him back and repay the favor so again can't criticize anything so far So this $30,000 is all the friends that I helped who told me that they would pay me back, but they never did. Isn't that always the way when friends or family want to borrow money and then for whatever reason, they always find a reason why they can't pay you back yet. And they just happen to consistently push that boundary. And then you go and see them online buying luxurious goods or traveling, 
Not that I've ever experienced that myself. But yet again, the total amount that he's spent here is still manageable and he's kept it low. So quite often athletes would spend all of this money on one car. So the fact that he's included all of this and got himself a decent car, but then done all the noble stuff, can't really complain. So I help a lot of people and I would say it's about $30,000 that I lost. It was okay. Uh, I helped them get out of bad situation, but the, the thing is when you start making a lot of money, you get a lot of people coming at you and everybody has problems. The easy way to get out of financial problems is to borrow money from someone you know, take it and never give it back. If you lend money to someone, make sure you can afford to lose it. That's an absolutely good way to look at it. And quite frankly, I think once you get burned a few times, you start to set the thing of, well, no, I'm never lending people money. And I think that that's a good way to look at things. I spent a lot of money traveling around the world to learn new fighting skills. I went to Thailand to learn Muay Thai. I went to Brazil to, to get better at Jiu Jitsu, in New York to get better in Jiu Jitsu as well. I went to Los Angeles to train, train with Fred Roach, a famous boxing coach to get better boxing skills. France, to, to work on my striking skills as well, because I knew I couldn't stay in Montreal here in order to, to grow and become a better fighter. I needed to, to learn expertise from others. And when I say traveling, I'm talking about training, classes, the, the food, airplane, the hotels. That's a lot, yeah. 200,000 now. Uh, traveling for training, $200,000. Now that might come off as a lot, but at the same time, that's effectively like a college degree for a UFC fighter. So when you're a champion, that's actually not a lot of money relatively, but that also comes back to where they're not getting paid enough realistically, because look at how much money he has to spend investing in his craft. I wouldn't even call this spending. I would say it's actually an investment in the same way that a business would buy new machinery, for example, he has to spend on investing in his skills and his craft. And that's kind of where this money goes to. It's hard to become champion, but it's even harder to stay champion because you become the target. So that's why when I made my first million dollar, I spent a lot of money and I invested on myself, you know, in order to get better. And that's true. It's an investment in himself. And you know, he was a UFC fighter for quite a while. So I'm sure he earned a lot more than a million dollars on the, on this first contract. He would have had multiple contracts after. So again, that's where that would have paid off. And don't forget that he's also involved in all different types of UFC related stuff, even after he's retired as a fighter. So it's still investing in him going forward. Also as a UFC fighter, you can train people in a gym and get paid to do that once you're retired. So this is actually investing in his future as well as weird as that may seem. I bought myself a jacuzzi and a, a ice bath so I can switch. I believe it helped my, my body to recuperate better when I have very hardcore training sessions. I spent about, I would say, 15 to $20,000 on that. Yet again, this is barely spending. This is investing in himself and his body, which is his key tool or machinery to get his job done. I hope that he can actually write those off in an accounting sense because those are legitimately expenses spent in the journey to actually earn income. So realistically, they have to be tax write-offs, you would think. And it was a good investment, I have to say. The last thing that I bought with my first million, it was a condo, $500,000, but I needed to do renovation in it and it cost me about 100K. Condo plus renovation, $600,000. Again, that's a reasonable place to live. He can always resell it. So I don't know what it would be worth to resell. We'd have to look at the actual property, et cetera. But realistically, that's a reasonable priced property for him. So well done to him. So I'm really into dinosaur fossil. I love paleontology and I bought for, I would say $20,000 megalodon tooth. Uh, mosasaurs, jaw, Tyrannosaurus rex, all kinds of different uh, animals that used to live uh, a long time, uh, a long time ago. I mean, you might say that that's a lavish expense, but it's not exactly like they're going to go out there and make more dinosaur bones. So realistically, they will also go up in price over the time. I don't know a lot about dinosaur bones, but I think that they would actually be a decent investment. So. 
Yet again, everything he's done is an investment, pretty much. Paleontology, I love it because you learn about the past, and if you learn about the past, you can understand the present better and predict the future. And the other thing about this as well is that he's clearly shown that he's actually an expert in this, so he would know what he's talking about. So he's not gonna necessarily get ripped off like someone like me who went to go buy dinosaur bones who has literally no idea about them. I could easily be tricked into buying something expecting it to go up in value and then find out it's a fake or whatever, but he seems to actually know what he's talking about. Dinosaur fossil, 20K. The other thing is you can see how excited he is talking about it. So for 20K, it seems like a really good investment and it's something that he can keep forever that's not gonna go down in value. When you start making money in, in combat sport, you have to keep in mind that it's very hard to reach the top, but it's very easy to go back down. I think that's something that most athletes forget. The fact that yes, they start to earn a lot of money, but that money can go away at any moment. And once it's gone, you can't really necessarily come back up. There are rare instances, but realistically, the majority of people who are athletes, once they start to fall off, that's it. And it's a very slippery slope where they fall very quickly. Make sure to invest on yourself because if you don't get better, the game will catch up to you. So you need to make sure that you invest on yourself, get new knowledge, make sure you have treatment to, in order to recuperate better. So invest this thing on yourself. You know, it's interesting. A lot of people look at this and might say, well, okay, that's combat sports. I'm not a combat sport. I'm an accountant. I work in law, etc." But realistically, that advice applies to everyone. Just because you're the best at what you do, doesn't mean you have to stop learning. And realistically, just because you have a university or college degree doesn't mean that you know everything or that you need to stop learning. Even if you have a master's degree, you can still keep learning. There's a lot to learn out there and things keep improving so you can always keep improving yourself no matter what you do. If I would have go back in time and tell the kid that I was that one day I will become world champion in mixed martial art, I think I will believe because I always knew that I had all the tools. I worked very hard. And also I was very lucky because I had the chance to meet incredible mentors and the stars were all al aligned for me. This shows his self-belief and the power of mentors and how much that can push you forward. When a door opened to me, I was getting in. If the door were all closed, I was breaking in to create my own opportunity. That's important as well. I think a lot of people look at things and say, there's no opportunities for me, so I have to do something else. But realistically, you can force your way in and find your own opportunity. And with the internet and everything that's going on in these days, there are more and more ways that you can create your own opportunity no matter what you want to do. Thank you, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Well, that was very informative. I hope we all learned a lot from that because clearly he has the right mindset there. Everything he spent was an investment and nothing was lavish or over the top. So I hope you can take the lessons from this and apply it to your own life. If you enjoyed this, please check me a like and subscribe. And as always, whatever you do, good luck.